गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक दिस इज माई थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन मॉड्यूल फाइव इंजीनियरिंग फिजिक्स ट्वेंटी वन पी एच वाई ट्वेल्व बॉर ट्वेंटी टू सो इन द लास्ट टू क्लासेस वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट नैनो मेटीरियल्स नैनो कॉम्पोजिट्स देर सिंथेसिस अप्लीकेशन एंड इम्पॉर्टेंस इन द प्रजेंट वर्ल्ड एंड देन ऑल्सो अबाउट इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन दैट इज कैरेक्टराइजेशन टेक्निक्स सो वी मेनली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एक्सरे डिफ्रैक्ट्रोमीटर now it is time to take up another equally important instrument that is x-ray photoelectron spectrometer and the technique is x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy short form xps so here onwards i call it as xps well uh, when a sample substance is synthesized using its constituents some unwanted elements may be deposited on the surface as impurity let us say you synthesize one copper plate during the synthesis of copper plate some aluminum particles may be get embedded or some uh, brass or some other elements they get embedded uh, either single element or composite elements gets embedded on the surface so it is actually an impurity it is a, it is an unwanted thing they can be they have to be identified and they have to be removed or uh, uh, whether material is uh, suitable for the practical application or not that we have to decide so how to identify impurities present on the material that is with the help of xps they can be identified using x ray photo electron spectrometer xps is actually used for surface studies only what are all the materials present on the surface so therefore it is a is a surface characterization technique and used to analyze a sample up to up to maximum of 5 nanometer depth so you can go little bit inside but not too much about 2 to 5 nanometer depth you can study using xps next it reveals types of chemical elements or compounds present on the surface of a given substance and the nature of the chemical bond existing between them so what type of uh, impurity is present and how it is bonded with the host material all those things can be estimated or can be analyzed or can be uh, determined with the help of xps now what actually the working principle of xps dear students already you studied photoelectric effect in puc what is this photoelectric effect when light of suitable frequency falls on the surface of a material okay so electrons are ejected provided the frequency of the incident radiation is greater than or equal to threshold value so this is photoelectric effect more or less similar principle is involved more or less similar concept is involved in xps also xps therefore we can say works on the principle of photoelectric effect as we know electrons are bound to the nucleus due to electrostatic force of attraction so there is a force of attraction between electron and nucleus unless you overcome that force of attraction you cannot remove electrons from the atom so for that you have to give sufficient energy so when sufficient energy is given using electromagnetic radiation so here it is x ray to overcome this attraction they leave atom and move with certain kinetic energy see when you give energy with the help of x ray electrons not only come out of the atom also move with certain kinetic energy because you have given enough energy you have given excess energy so they come out and travel with certain kinetic energy by studying the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons it is possible to analyze the surface elements so i hope you understood with the help of x ray you supply energy to the substance knock out the electrons thus removed electrons move with certain velocity so study that kinetic energy part then you can know about what type of material what type of impurity what type of extra element present in the given sample well if you take binding energy be which in puc you call it as no uh, um, adhesive energy binding energy ke is a kinetic energy phi is the surface work function i think in puc you study only work function what is this work function that is the energy required to remove the outermost electron see this is the inner part nucleus you have k shell l shell m shell etc like that outermost from there 
you need to remove the electron little bit is enough that is work function if i want to remove from deep inside the atom then it is binding energy plus work function so you have to give so much of energy if you give e amount of energy athwa h nu amount of energy that will be utilized for binding energy purpose work function purpose and then kinetic energy purpose that means h nu is equal to be plus ke plus phi this is the equation connecting all the energies look at this diagram i supply one electromagnetic radiation of course it is here uh, x ray beam and these are the core electrons innermost electrons and this is the binding energy to overcome the valence band and the innermost energy levels and once it comes to the surface almost surface it has to be knocked out the minimum energy required to knock out the electron is work function so supplied energy is utilized to take up electron from bottom to top of the valence band from top of the valence band to outermost part of the material from there to somewhere else that is kinetic energy that means h nu equals be plus phi plus ke that is this equation well now how the instrument is constructed so you know the principle principle is photoelectric effect only x ray beam of suitable energy is incident that is utilized to remove the electron from the innermost part that involves binding energy work function and some kinetic energy so h nu equals be plus phi plus ke now the construction part xps consists of source obviously there must be a source sample holder which is almost similar to our previous instrument slit that is for collimation purpose and electron detector remember earlier it was x ray detector now it is electron detector earlier x rays were falling on the surface of the material and proceeding towards the detector electromagnetic beam only was proceeding now it is not so x ray falls on the surface electrons are knocked out they are proceeding towards the detector so the detector must be an electron detector not electromagnetic wave detector next the whole arrangement must be kept in highly evacuated chamber the whole setup must be in a vacuum chamber so that there should not be any interference or loss of energy due to surrounding in unwanted compounds present in the cavity so you have to suck out all the air present in the chamber so you have to have highest highest degree of evacuation next pressure inside the chamber must be as low as 10 power minus 9 millibar when x rays are incident on the sample electrons in the sample uh, absorb the energy and they are rejected with certain kinetic energy this is what i showed in the previous diagram energy of the ejected electron is analyzed by the detector so you measure the energy of the emitted electron by knowing the energy of the emitted electron a graph of these energies can be plotted so you can plot the graph of either binding energy or kinetic energy versus how many electrons are emitted it is the binding energy along y axis number of electrons along x axis or kinetic energy along y axis number of electrons on the x axis so you have to construct the graph this is a brief sketch of instrumentation construction part i have source of x ray beam sample electrons are emitted they are proceeding towards the detector this is the electron detector let us not worry much about this electron detector it can be galvanometer also because when electron enters now if you make a circuit so electrons can flow in the circuit can produce current so it is a current detector that's all and uh, that you can connect it to some uh, instrument which can convert the signal into uh, digital form or graph form graph analyzer it is okay let me continue so i told you you have to construct the graph graph of binding energy versus number of electrons kinetic energy versus electrons from these graphs one can identify nature of the element present on the surface of given substance you know how binding energy is different for different materials i have copper 
on which aluminium is sitting as impurity. So aluminium binding energy, copper binding energy are totally different. When I incident X-ray beam, it will knock out electron from aluminium as well as from copper. So some electrons are coming out with lesser kinetic energy, some are coming out with more kinetic energy. So plot the graph, you keep on reference and keep on comparing, right? So first you study pure aluminium, construct the graph. First you study pure copper, construct the graph. Then you study the mixture of two where aluminium is considered as impurity. The sample what you have prepared, send the X-ray beam. Actually, we don't know whether the sample is having aluminium or not. Simply you send the X-ray beam, plot the graph, compare that graph with the standard graph. If that graph is matching with aluminium, then you can say in the given sample, aluminium is sitting as impurity. If it matches with brass, you can say in the given sample, brass is sitting as impurity like that. So you need to design the graphs first. Graphs of what? Graphs of current, sorry, graphs of binding energy, graphs of kinetic energy versus number of electrons. So application wise, XPS application, XPS is used to determine elemental composition on the surface. To write empirical formula of pure metals, once you know whether the substance is pure or not, then you can decide whether to write the formula or not. Okay, so once the substance is decided, right, whether it is a pure element or containing some other organic or inorganic elements, then you decide to write the equations or to write the chemical structure for that particular compound. Actually, this is purely chemical property analysis. It is not exactly physical property analysis. It is more focused towards a chemical property characterization. So I have few more applications here. Chemical or electrical electronic state can be detected. At the same time, one or two dis, uh, no, disadvantages are there. Limitations are there. Okay, these are the limitations. Unfortunately, uh, sorry, you, uh, failure analysis and percentage of corrosion evaluation can be done, but not to the hun exact 100% level it cannot be done. Uniformity of the composition can be detected, but only on the top surface. Uniformity of the composition can be detected, but only on the top surface, but not inside. Means uh, limitation is XPS is used only for surface analysis. That's all I can say. So that's all about XPS, that is X-ray photospectroscopy. So summary, XPS principle is photoelectric effect, construction, source, sample holder, electron detector, graph analyzer, working, electron, sorry, X-ray incident on the surface, knocks out electrons, Electrons move with certain kinetic energy, measure the kinetic energy, binding energy, work function, construct the graphs. From the graph, you can find out what type of element is present in the given sample. This is about XPS. So with the detailed discussion of X-ray based instruments, now let us move on to next class of elements, microscopes. Uh, most of you are familiar with microscopes, especially those who have taken biology as their uh, you know, special subject in PUC, uh, PCMB students, they might have used microscopes in their biology lab. What is a microscope? We define microscope broadly like this. Microscopes are the instruments designed to produce magnified images of the objects that is the main purpose and the microscope should achieve three tasks it not only magnifies it also should satisfy these three following points number one of course magnified image number two resolution limit of resolution must be very high means they must be able to distinguish between two closely lying objects magnification resolution they go hand in hand okay and finally, they should render the details of the substance, details of the microorganism, details of the object under study on a screen. That screen can be our eye, means directly I can see, 
or it can be produced on the screen okay or it can be pictured using camera so microscope should okay uh, satisfy or should have following three points number one magnification number two resolution number three image must be produced either on the high means it can be view, visual image or photographic image camera okay microscopes all microscopes contain source of illumination light must fall on the object objective lens the lens which is very close to the object eye piece the lens which is very close to the eye and the screen for example I, I i want to see this object first of all light should fall on this object after some optical phenomena light proceeds towards me so in order to make the light to fall on the object i need one lens here that is object lens after some optical phenomena maybe diffraction maybe reflection maybe refraction maybe dispersion light proceeds towards me so i have one more eyepiece here that is uh, one more lens that is eyepiece and finally it enters into my eye it enters into my eye means on the retina it forms image on the retina it forms image so retina is my screen so the whole setup light source object object lens eyepiece screen all put together it is microscope all put together it is microscope so a microscope looks like this first of all i go from bottom to top bottom light source this is a light source and then a lens and then object under study a lens very close to the object and then another lens condensing lens eyepiece and finally screen this is the schematic sketch of microscope and this is a typical microscope what you use in biology lab okay so here light is coming from the source object is uh, kept here and from the object light reflects enters into the uh, telescope and finally it forms image on the retina this is a microscope schematic sketch coming to electron microscope electron microscope is a microscope that attains highest resolution highest resolution using electron beam to illuminate the object so the resolution is the main criteria main advantage of electron microscope it was designed in 1931 electron microscopes are used to investigate the fine structure of wide range of biological and inorganic specimens they are also used in industry for quality control and failure analysis what is so special about electron microscope see dear students in puc physics you studied about resolving power and limit of resolution resolving power means ability of the instrument to distinguish between two closely lying objects normal human beings can see two objects very clearly if the gap between them is the gap between them is less than less than 1 1 mm if the gap between them is less than 1 mm okay if it is more than 1 mm sorry 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 it is more than 1 mm if it is less than 1 mm you cannot uh, distinguish like that so two small objects are two objects lying very close to each other okay how efficiently how effectively you can detect that is what is called as a resolution resolving power okay and that resolving power is given by 2n sin theta divided by lambda according to this formula resolving power is inversely proportional to wavelength when wavelength decreases resolving power increases and in modern physics that is in module 2 you have already studied de broglie concept according to de broglie accelerated electrons behave as waves with a very small wavelength so when electron is accelerated when electron is accelerated right so when electron is accelerated uh, they travel with wave you know they travel in the form of wave okay they travel in the form of waves so the waves are called matter waves you have already studied this in uh, puc also in engineering physics module 2 that wavelength is given by lambda is equal to h by p or h by mv h by mv right so h by mv or h by p 
also given by h by root of 2m into v where v is the accelerating voltage so when you accelerate the electron they travel with certain waves and the wavelength is very small about 0.1 angstrom and we pretty uh, know about that we know pretty well that as wavelength decreases resolving power increases when wavelength is reduced resolution enhances resolving power increases so the wavelength of the accelerated electron is given here this is the working principle of electron microscope what is the working principle accelerated electron behaves like a wave wavelength of that wave is very small as wavelength decreases resolving power increases so electron microscope resolution is very high because because we are using accelerated electrons which are traveling like a waves they are traveling like a waves so electron microscope basically use accelerated electrons as illuminating source not light as illuminating source and of course we have different types in electron microscope tem transmission electron microscope sem scanning electron microscope and then stem scanning electron uh, tunneling electron microscope i take up only tem transmission electron microscope transmission electron microscope is a very basic very basic electron microscope in tem electron beam is made to pass through the specimen it is analogous in many ways to our conventional optical microscope that what you use in biology lab i just give you a one to one comparison afterwards but before that different parts of the tem are electron gun electron gun means source producing electrons like you heat a filament electrons are emitted that is thermionic emission so that is nothing but electron gun so it is firing electrons so it can be considered as source next accelerating source once electrons are coming out now they have to be accelerated otherwise they cannot behave like a wave so you need accelerating voltage then those electrons must be condensed those electrons must be expanded they those electrons must be made to travel in a parallel direction so we have to deviate their directions you know for deviating them we need a sort of lens arrangement that lens arrangement is nothing but magnetic lens arrangement dear students i give you this as an another task try to know more about magnetic lens how actually it works it is not a very big or complicated concept uh, whatever the knowledge required for understanding magnetic lens you already have it is very basics of electrostatics current electricity and movement of the charge in magnetic field so please try to know more about magnetic lens construction and working so that is another part finally specimen for study and then screen to get the object so i repeat the different parts of the term electron gun acting like a source accelerating voltage source and then magnetic lens arrangement specimen which is to be studied and finally screen on which image is formed okay ah here is the comparison just look at the diagram first diagram is this one is optical microscope this one is electron microscope this diagram i already displayed now i am giving electron microscope light source equivalent is electron gun condensing lens equivalent is magnetic lens this is what i told you try to find more information about construction and working of magnetic lens specimen sample so here the specimen is in arbitrary shape but for tem sample cannot have any arbitrary shape that material must be must be you know prepared to begin with sample preparation itself is a very big task sample must be as thin as possible otherwise electrons cannot pass through electrons cannot transmit through the specimen the name itself suggests it is a transmission electron microscope so electron must transmit through the substance so sample preparation itself is a big task and then again you need magnetic lens arrangement aperture means narrow opening 
again magnetic lens and the screen right so here is one to one comparison screen to screen eye piece to magnetic lens specimen to sample optical uh, source to electron gun so this is a comparison i hope you are able to follow up working how it works tem how it works here i go electron gun consists of tungsten filament which generate electrons by means of heating that means thermionic emission these electrons are accelerated towards the specimen so you apply the potential difference electrons come out now apply the potential difference connect this end to negative other end to positive electrons rush towards the target then condenser lens focus the electron beam on the specimen condenser lens means this one uh, electrons are emitted these are the lens these lens will focus the beam on the specimen this is the specimen so beam is focused on the specimen beam is focused on the specimen after focusing the beam it will pass through the specimen so electrons will pass through the specimen once they pass through they scatter in all different directions and again they have to be collected by objective lens and then finally these electrons will be projected on the screen with the help of projector lens a projector lens is equivalent to ip is ip is projector lens both are same what job ip is does the rays fall on my eyeball and finally image is formed on the screen same job is done by the projector electrons are projected on the screen and on the screen they produce image thus produced image is exactly replica of the specimen whatever the information they gather from the specimen they produce it on the screen dear students it is almost like photo taking photo of the sample almost like you know taking the snap of the sample so that is the working part of tem so tem is very simple principle wave associated with the electron and its wavelength is very small hence resolve resolving power is more there is a working principle construction it consists of electron source magnetic lens arrangement screen sample okay and then uh, detector detector is screen only working electron gun emits the electron accelerate them of course we need accelerating source also in the construction part accelerate them and um, focus them on the substance focus them on the sample they pass through the sample and again you focus them on the screen image is formed on the screen so this is tem construction and working so tem is one part the advanced version of that one is sem that is scanning electron microscope tem is passing electron beam is passing through the substance sem me scanning electron microscope it is not actually passing directly through the substance let us see how actually sem works sem is also an electron microscope tem sem stem they all are electron microscopes only now coming to sem that is scanning electron microscope as i told just now it is an improved model of an electron microscope and it is used to study three dimensional image of the specimen principle when the accelerated primary electron strike the sample it produces secondary electrons these secondary electrons are collected by a charged electron detector and they produce three dimensional image on the sample of the sample so here electron beam is not simply passing through the specimen they fall on the specimen and remove electrons from it so it is almost like xps in xps we were sending x ray and knocking the electrons here we are sending electrons and we are removing electrons that's all okay thus removed electrons produce 3d image on the screen in sem primary electron beam that is incident beam incident beam okay in sem primary electron beam moves along x axis 
x and y axis in same primary electron b moves along x and y axis see this is the surface it moves along x axis y axis x axis y axis x axis y axis like this so this way this way this way this way i move okay go like this like this like this like this and again come like this this is what is called a uh, raster fashion this is called raster fashion scanning okay so in same primary electron b moves along x and y axis to ensure it scan in a raster fashion to and fro along x and y axis right so here i show uh, see it goes x ray electron beam goes like this right so like this like this like this like this so it keeps on moving like this so this is what is called raster fashion when the raster scanning is done some electrons are removed some things are happening what are those things happening here high energy primary electron beam falling and scanning the sample can generate different kinds of other electrons photons and irradiations out of these emissions back scattered electrons and secondary electrons are essential for imaging see i roughly show whatever it is happening here this is the sample this is the sample this is the primary electron beam falling okay this is falling and going to scan it when it falls electrons are ejected secondary emission and incident electron beam itself is scattered that is back scattering and incident beam can produce x ray incident beam can produce electrons incident beam can travel transmit through the specimen so so many things are happening when electron falls on the surface and scan that beam itself is reflected back back scattering or it may emit some electrons it may emit some x rays or it can pass through also that possibility is also there or that possibility is minimum so all these things are happening and all these things depend and gather some information about the substance okay substance which is under study among them bse back scattered electrons are reflected when primary electron beam interacts with the sample object when the primary electron beam interact with the sample bse are emitted this is called elastic interaction another one is secondary emission secondary emission come when the primary beam interacts with atoms of the sample this is inelastic interaction so in inelastic interaction secondary electron image gives detailed surface information bsc images gives detailed information about atomic number se gives detailed information about surface so two informations we get bsc gives atomic number of the substance se secondary emission gives you the surface morphology of the substance this is the construction part this uh, sem consists of electron gun it produce electron beam of course it is accelerated directly fall on the surface while falling we have to have lens arrangement this one objective lens arrangement and also scanning coils i told you know x that electron beam has to move to and fro so that scanning arrangement we need to have and once it falls on the sample it remove it it ejects electrons uh, that is secondary emission that beam itself may be scattered back that is bsc back scattered electron they have to be detected so back scattered electron has to be detected secondary emission has to be detected for them we have two separate detectors bsc detector and se detector so this is the instrumentation sem consists of electron source condenser lens scanning coil objective lens detector etc and then working i already told you how it works primary electron beam is produced by the electron gun they are made to incident on the sample the beam scans surface in raster fashion as a result electrons are emitted and emitted electrons proceed towards the detector so electrons from the source fall on the substance and then back scatter the scattered electrons has to be detected so scanning electron microscope is used to study inner part that is a, a three dimensional image even surface morphology also so dear students 
today i explain mainly electron microscope in addition to that one x ray instrument also that is xps so in my next tutorial i am going to discuss this particular instrument that is stem scanning tunneling electron microscope so let me consolidate xps working principle photoelectric effect next comes electron microscope in that tem transmission electron microscope working principle wavelength associated with the electron which is very small hence resolving power is more next sem scanning electron microscope it is not wavelength parameter it is not the wavelength parameter it is a scanning parameter electron beam is scanning the surface during the scanning it emits electrons and also it produce some other radiations by studying the emitted radiations by studying the emitted electrons we can know the details of the surface and other things that is the working principle of sem so you focus mainly on the working principle construction working and one or two applications so in my next tutorial i will take up this particular instrument that is stem and i will stop for uh, this lecture today at this stage uh, please share your feedback give me your feedback so that i can improvise in my further lectures later on thank you thank you very much